I hate crop circles. Crop circles make me angry. It frustrates me to see people celebrate crop circles and treat them like some sort of a miracle from the stars. Crop circles represent the most evil people on this planet. I finally understood this while reading a book celebrating crop circles. And when I finally realized what I had in my hand, it made me feel sick. I literally had to throw the book away. <laughs> There feels something very benevolent about crop circles. I don't sense anything of evil intent, and it would seem to me a strange thing to do, just kind of make these beautiful patterns if you wanted to scare anybody. If they are evil, well, they're too beautiful, it seems to me. Yes, crop circles are not designed to scare us. That would be silly. They're simply artistic depictions of mathematical and scientific principles. But that doesn't mean that crop circles aren't malevolent. And unlike everything else I talk about on this channel, crop circles are real, right? I've talked about ghosts before, but spirits might not be real. I've talked about UFOs in the past, but there's no such thing as aliens. Bigfoot? That could just be hoaxers in the woods stamping footprints in the soil with wood cutouts for all I know. But crop circles... Crop circles are real. Crop circles are not a hoax. Well, not most of them at least. I will prove that crop circles are real in this video, I promise you. But the crop circles themselves are only half the story. After I explain how crop circles are made, it will reveal a very uncomfortable truth about the secrets that our governments keep. There are a lot of theories as to what crop circles could be. Many think, you know, there's an intelligence behind them. I think they're made by aliens or extra dimensionals. It may well be that we are being visited by other intelligences and maybe they feel like leaving some graffiti in the fields. Or maybe it's they're trying to very gently make people aware of them in a way that doesn't create fear. But there are many, many other theories, some very strange, some religious, some you would never even imagine. Well, well, I have a theory that clearly nobody imagined. Crop circles do not represent whimsical fairy magic. Crop circles are not fun, cute alien novelties. Crop circles are created by the most powerful people on Earth, and they use them to mock us and celebrate their evil religion. And it's all part of some game they're playing. In this video, I'm going to teach you a little bit about how this crop circle technology probably works, as well as a little bit of the history of crop circles. And before I get started, remember these videos are just for fun. Don't take them too seriously. You know me, I like to just give my unique spin on these stories. So, what the hell are crop circles? Today, farmers can hire companies to help them design a complex corn maze in their fields using what they call a GPS stencil. With the assistance of GPS, the farmer can follow a predetermined path to draw a complex artistic design in their crops. But the company who started this said that they were hesitant to use GPS at first, even in the early 2010s, because GPS wasn't really that reliable or accurate even back then. Today, GPS is accurate enough that we use it in construction sites to ensure accuracy with large projects. But this latest generation of complex crop circles started popping up in the late 1970s, becoming prominent in the 1990s, long before the average person ever had access to a personal GPS device, let alone a device that was accurate enough to ensure this kind of precision. And I think that because the average person didn't have access to GPS back then, Nobody really considered that the militaries of the world would have had access to some form of global positioning in the 80s and 90s. I assure you that plenty of technologies that we take for granted today were available to the militaries since the beginning of the computer age. Oliver's Castle, Wiltshire, 1989. There's a couple of lights down there somewhere. This controversial film appears to show strange objects hovering above a cornfield. Below, complex circle formations appear. Crop circles are not 
aliens. There is no such thing as aliens. I know that a lot of you think that aliens for some reason are drawing designs in the wheat to communicate with us. And that's fine. I'm not saying you're stupid for believing that, but you're wrong. However, for some reason, the vast majority of the global community of crop circle researchers are pretty convinced that crop circles are created by aliens. And they come from a very high level of consciousness. Absolutely sure for myself, based on my own personal experience, that we are dealing with a genuine phenomena that involves paranormal intervention. Probably extraterrestrial species that is working with human consciousness. And it seems to me the most sane way of dealing with this is to accept that this is a demonstration of a level of intelligence and compassion towards us, which is, is pulling us up. Why does everyone think this? I will admit that crop circles are very impressive. They often depict fundamental mathematical or geometrical principles. Whoever it is that's designing these things is genuinely a mathematical artist. There's a crop circle depicting pi and binary. There's a crop circle depicting Euler's identity in ASCII code. There's a crop circle depicting the Doppler effect. There are crop circles depicting different angles of a toroid. There are crop circles depicting our planets orbiting the sun in our solar system. And yes, there are even crop circles depicting aliens. Crop circles can be broken down into different design categories even. There are so many different kinds of crop circle, I wouldn't even be able to name them all in this video. Obviously, there are clubs of people who make crop circles for fun. There's some characters behind me. What were they up to last night? Crop circles. Oh, Alan, well done, crop circles. And they admitted that they've been responsible for almost all the crop circles. They used to be on the news yeah, every summer. There'd be yeah. aerial shots, and there were the people who called themselves seriologists who genuinely believed that these were the work of, of people from outer space oh, or from nonsense. magnetic forces from ley lines or all kinds Make of nonsense. This. Over the years, lots of people have come forward claiming to be responsible for hundreds of these things. We don't say how many we make, but oh. we've made hundreds over the years that we've been doing it. All complex formations are made by people. Some of them are inspired by something other than human intelligence, but I don't think that any of the flattening of the corn is done by anything but stomping boards. But there is simply no way that these hobbyists could have hoaxed every single one of these crop circles. That's impossible. They're lying to us. Are there still those who refuse to believe that it's all hoaxes like you? Absolutely. Well, I've been running, ringing your production office, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, that's right. This modern era of crop circles may have begun in the late 1970s, but crop circles have been reported for hundreds of years, and there's always been an air of mystery to them, often associated with the devil or Satanism. On August 22nd, 1678, it was reported that a devil circle appeared in a farm field in Hertfordshire, England, just north of London. According to the legend, the farmer had apparently insulted his neighbor, who he usually hires to mow his field, by claiming that it would be better if the devil would do it. That night, witnesses claimed to have seen a bizarre type of fire that nobody had ever seen before, and they found a round patch of farmland that had been mowed down. The people of Hertfordshire believed that it was the devil himself that mowed that crop. But that's kind of different from the crop circles that we see today. The grass or the stalks are not mowed. In fact, they're not even snapped over. The stalks are all uniformly warped or burnt, leaving them at a 90 degree angle. And it also leaves the crop still attached to the stalk in immaculate condition. Amateur crop circles are found all the time. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but there's a distinct difference between the types of crop circles that Satanists hobbyists and pranksters make, stomping the grass down with wood, and the high quality crop circles that the crop circle community believes are being made by aliens. First of all, most of these designs are far too large and complex for a handful of people to be able to make with some two by fours and some string in the dark of night. It's not impossible that a group of people could pull this off from time to time, but the thing is that the larger and more complex these designs get, 
the more likely it is that somebody's going to make a mistake or get caught using whatever that special technology it is that they use to bend the stalks over. Yet year after year, hundreds more crop circles show up without a single mistake and no eyewitnesses ever observe this technology. In fact, with the evidence found at these crop circle sites, it seems very unlikely that the crews making these crop circles are even on the ground at all. It's crazy enough to think that a crop circle hundreds of meters across could just pop up overnight like this, but that problem is exacerbated when you realize that some of these crop circles were reported as showing up as quickly as 15 minutes. That's happened more than just a couple of times. There's a multitude of crop circles that have shown up in a confusingly short period of time. But more importantly, the technique of stomping grass down with 2x4s does not explain what researchers are finding at these crop circle sites. When you stomp down grass, straw, or stalks with a 2x4, there will be mechanical damage at non-uniform heights. Mechanical damage means stretching, snapping, breaking, crushing. Physical force was applied to the grass, so the grass had to break to take its new shape. But that's not what we're seeing at these more complex crop circle sites. The grass has no signs of mechanical damage at all. Instead, the crops have been curled over to their 90 degree angle with some kind of internal expansion or growth. Some of them even look exploded or burnt. Something internally has happened to these stalks. Something physically changed them from the inside. And because the warping of the stalk seems to be happening at a uniform level, there's no other damage to the crop. The rest of it's in immaculate condition. But when hoaxers or Satanists make their crop circles, they're stomping it down with wood, so they're damaging the entire crop. And the bend isn't happening at a uniform level. On the more alien crop circles, nothing even sheds off. I hate ancient aliens. But one time they hired a group of hoaxers to recreate a specific crop circle that was found in a specific crop of flowers. And these hoaxers perfectly demonstrated the issue. While the recreation of the Golden Ball Hill Formation looks very similar to the original from the air, what made the formation truly unique was not how it appeared from above, but how it appeared on the ground. None of the flower heads on the original 2005 Golden Ball Hill Formation were damaged or destroyed. And the seamless lay of flowers suggests that it was not mechanically produced using boards and shuffling over the stalks. So whoever it is that's creating these crop circles apparently is able to set their device to a specific height above the soil and only the lower part of the crop that's intersecting with that focal point is affected. And because they're using some form of technology, these more complex crop circles have cleaner edges and curves. Sometimes you can even tell from the air when you're looking at a hoaxer because they did it so sloppy. There's an eerie uniformity to these more alien looking crop circles. They're too perfect. It has like an uncanny effect. Sure, you could say that there's no way that a human could make a crop circle this perfect, but maybe a computer can. Then there's the magnetic iron pellets that have shown up at a vast multitude of these crop circle sites. Tiny little spherules of magnetic iron. And it's not only their presence which is of interest, it's the manner in which they're distributed, frequently around the periphery of these circles, sometimes uh, distributed linearly, indicating a delivery system that's fairly sophisticated. This is one of those details that usually gets buried under the reports for these crop circles. You'll almost never hear the media talk about the magnetic iron pellets. For some reason, you can't even really find much about it online. So something about the process of creating these crop circles not only draws iron to those sites, but it also magnetizes it. Kinda sounds like an electromagnetic process. 
doesn't it? Electronics often go wrong in crop circles. Some people will describe a strange tingling, headaches, or feeling rather ill. Electromagnetic fields are often experienced at these crop circle sites, usually interfering with cameras and sound equipment. This usually manifested as sound interference that some people in the media came to call the crop circle sparrow. Did you actually hear any noises or see any lights? Because our, our findings would come up with a, what we call an electronic sparrow. Because of the mysterious and unique features of these complex crop circles, avid enthusiasts can easily tell the difference between a hoax crop circle and the real thing, and they'll even get pretty angry about it. Exactly, it's been Completely trampled to death. And vital evidence. And I just want to point out how illogical the official story is that we're told in the media that hoaxers make these things secretly in the night. But then why would they come out and tell us that they did it? That defeats the purpose. Like, this is what I'm talking about. These crop circle clubs apparently go out to these fields in the middle of the night secretly without any eyewitnesses ever seeing this and they're able to make it home at the end of the night without anyone any the wiser. But then they go on the news and tell the whole world that it was them that did it. Why? They want it both ways. They want to be secret and anonymous and mysterious, but then they also want to be world famous for doing it. It makes no sense. Why claim ownership to these things? Especially when you can't even explain how they're made. But that's kind of my problem, is we only really see those two options in the media. It's either aliens trying to communicate with us, or it's hoaxers using two by fours or Satanists. <laughs> but it's very Project Blue Bookian. It reminds me of the way that Project Blue Book operated around things like the Mothman and stuff like that in the 1960s. First, the media comes out and gets ahead of it by claiming it's some sort of a monster or an alien. And then the military shows up afterwards and says, no, it's actually this rare bird that doesn't usually come here. Both options seem to satisfy two different groups, the skeptics and the believers, but neither option really gives us the truth. And this also kind of reminds me of the cattle mutilation riddle. I think that there's a reason why so many of these paranormal events so closely resemble satanic rituals. It's kind of like they've adopted an existing ritual, but updated it with modern technology. And maybe they came up with this elaborate story about aliens to cover up the truth about what they're doing. And then for the normies, you put up a bunch of beer drinkers with two by fours and say that they're responsible for all the crop circles across the world. Bullshit. If you want to see these crop circles as a form of communication, well, the communication that they're using is really sketchy. People want to believe so badly that it's aliens communicating with us because they're using math and math is a universal language. But I argue that the creators of these crop circles are not teaching us anything or giving us a unique perspective of the universe. And ultimately, they're using our math. They're speaking our languages. There's nothing alien about the way they're communicating at all. I mean, if it's aliens using math, then they should be using alien math. Do you remember that movie with Jodie Foster? Do you remember how the aliens taught the humans a new type of math? It was like a base nine math, and it was meant to be displayed in a three-dimensional format or something like that. That's what it's like to talk to aliens. Their form of communication would appear alien. I think it's pretty obvious that it's a trap to get caught up trying to decipher what the designs in the crop circles are trying to communicate to us. If it were really aliens trying to communicate with us, they could do it in a much more direct way. Showing us reimagined designs of our own mathematical principles tells us nothing. In that way, I think that the crop circles say nothing to us. They've just got us chasing our tails here. The crop circle depicting the alien's face is the perfect example of what I'm trying to say here. It included a binary design that has an English message. If the aliens wanted to say things to us, they could just keep doing that. 
because that's very clear communication. This proves that whoever is making these crop circles knows how to talk to us. I don't think the real message is what the designs are trying to depict. I think the real message here is how the crop circles were even made in the first place. The people wielding this technology are showing it off and gloating about it, just waiting for one of us to figure out what they're doing. In a way, the crop circles are kind of a test, or rather they were a test. But we failed. When I first got into this riddle, I thought to myself, maybe we aren't asking the right questions about crop circles. Maybe we should be asking questions like, why do the vast majority of crop circles appear around the greater London, England area? Why do we see so many repeating symbols like eyes inside of a grid or checkered pattern? Or shapes like hexagons, hexagrams, and cubes? Or this Egyptian looking imagery? Pyramids and beetles? And crescent moons? Why are there so many electromagnetic phenomenon, like the magnetic iron pellets or the electromagnetic field? Why do people so often describe seeing UFOs flying around crop circle sites? And most importantly, how are they doing it? What technology are they employing to create these perfect, immaculate, clean, crisp crop circle lines? How are they doing it in such a way that it doesn't harm the crop? And how, in God's name, are they doing it so quickly? I've heard more than a few theories about how this is happening, but I was never really satisfied with anyone's conclusions. But you have to remember that just like every other mystery that I've dissected over the years, this is just a magic trick. And magic is all about misdirection. It was really ironic how I ended up figuring this out because it was while I was reading Linda Moulton Howe's book, a book where she tries to convince us that it's aliens. I was literally sitting on the floor of my apartment, my internet was down, and my phone was out of data, so I had no way to Google anything. And even the way that Linda herself lays out the details of the findings and contextualizes the timeline for the series of events, it could not possibly be more obvious that it's one of our own militaries that's doing this. Linda describes all the same bizarre phenomena phenomenon associated with crop circles in much greater detail than I did, like the strange growths or burn marks at the pivot point where the crop bent, or the magnetic iron pellets found on the ground, even wind vortexes that are detected around these crop circles. That's something I didn't mention before. I heard a surprising sound. One afternoon I was in a field when I heard a multidimensional sound in the sky. Two friends were with me at the time and heard it too. Like loud speakers turning in the air with varying volumes and frequencies. A sound impossible for me to explain. All the air was vibrating in my face and it was like bloody hell. And this is on a windy hilltop, I was well awake. And um, it was like an object of some kind that was invisible, but thumping like a loud heartbeat. It must have been like this far from my face. And it was like standing in front of like a like a hi-fi speaker, you know, like in a, in a, in a club or something. Ooh, fucking hell, what is that? And it moves around me like um, 180 degrees from front to back and then stopped and just blinked out and that was it. But more importantly, and the strangest detail of the book, is for some reason she lays out a timeline of events leading up to 9-11 and she postulates that the aliens were trying to communicate something to us leading up to that tragedy. And there was something about hearing about crop circles in that specific context that broke my brain open about them. When I look at those weird bends in the grass, the amorphous growths, and I connect that to what happened on that terrible day, it made it all make sense. Immediately, I knew exactly what I was looking at. This is done using microwave radiation. Somebody would have had to have used a directed energy device. Cold fusion is kind of hard to explain, but using directed microwave energy, you can create a frequency of electromagnetic radiation that affects the molecular bonds of different materials. Here is a multitude of examples of what it looks like when you 
you perform cold fusion on different kinds of metal. Dr. Stephen E. Jones was one of the first people to ever discover cold fusion in the late 80s. Back in 2007, he published a paper where he suggested a connection between cold fusion and what happened on 9-11 and he has since been chased out of his field and completely discredited. But Dr. Jones said that cold fusion was always controversial and he was regularly told not to talk about it. But without realizing it, I had seen the effects of cold fusion before I had even heard about it back in the 80s and 90s. Decades ago, there were a few different media pieces on John Hutchinson, an absolutely mad scientist who created a home laboratory in his apartment with insane electrical equipment. John was never a scholar, he never managed to gain any credentials, and John himself admitted that he was never really sure exactly what was going on. So his experiments were never really taken seriously by the scientific community. But John would regularly perform experiments on all sorts of materials and obtain extremely unique results. The one that caught my eye when I was a child were his anti-gravity experiments. John would get all sorts of different things made of different material to float, wrenches, pliers, cannonballs. He even got paint to fall upwards out of its container. Using only 75 watts of energy, enough for a small light bulb, Hutchison made a 60-pound cannonball rise off the table. It would also fuse dissimilar materials, heat metal, but not burn the wood it sat on, shatter metal as well as change its crystalline structure. This was something to write home about. We colloquially refer to these results as the Hutchinson effect. His experiments on metals were the most fascinating of them all. John would manage to get metal to act like paper or like play-doh using only electromagnetic radiation. Do you see the way that the metal is flaking here like layers of wood? Or here it's been stretched out like chewing gum. The craziest one is where John managed to turn steel into powder. This is cold fusion. All of this, these are the effects of cold fusion. John also managed to bend pipes extremely clean. There are no cracks, there are no kinks, there are no folds, there's no stretching. It looks like the pipe was made this way. Hell, some of the crop circles that we've seen are bent this clean. John's workspace was always a complete mess. He had multiple different electrical devices and he was doing everything analog. He didn't have any computers helping him with any of his experiments, meaning he could never remember exactly what the settings were for everything. But John essentially proved that you could erase metal by turning it into powder. And if you had a computer that could remember the setting, essentially you'd be able to erase two metal from the top down uh, at free fall speed. I don't know why that specific detail was important. As these crop circles have demonstrated, whoever it is that's using this directed energy device is able to pick the exact level, the exact altitude to set their device. So that's essentially what's happening with these crop circles is that somebody's microwaving them with a directed energy device. Somebody's putting a mathematical design into their little design program and then hitting the cold fusion button. And then the directed energy device is essentially 3D printing that into the crop. That's why they're so perfect because it's literally a computer doing it. That's why they're so perfect is because it's literally a computer doing it. And you can imagine in the 1980s and even in the 90s, it would be hard to imagine that. I feel like I mostly understand what's going on, but one thing I haven't figured out is exactly how the device is informing the bend of the crop, how exactly it's telling the crop to choose which way to fold so that it makes exactly the right shape. But that's exactly how Linda's book worked it out. Like all of the crop circles in 2001 were leading up to 9-11, and suddenly that made total sense. She was right. There were crop circles that really were leading up to 9-11. The largest and most impressive crop circle that was ever created appeared on the night of my birthday, August 11th, and was discovered in the morning of August 12th, 2001. Exactly one month 
before September 11. This crop circle always stuck out to me because I always remembered it as my birthday crop circle. Linda Moulton Howe suggested that this crop circle and all the others leading up to it were somehow a message, either desperately trying to reach out to humanity, or perhaps it existed as some form of warning. But in reality, this was their way of showing off their fancy directed energy device before its big debut on 9-11. Think about it, they laid out this big, flashy, complicated design in August of 2001, so big and impressive that it should have gained a lot of public attention. There should have been a public outcry to try to figure out what this thing was. How are people making giant crop circles so quickly? But even though this was in the news, it didn't really create any public demand to figure out how these crop circles are being made. The world moved on and had already forgotten about it by September. Typical. This giant crop circle was their final Hail Mary attempt to see if anyone could figure out what was happening before they used it in New York. If anyone was ever going to figure out how they're making these crop circles, it would have been when they made the most impressive one ever. This should have stopped the world dead, but nobody cared. But here's the worst part. A year later, in the summer of 2002, that's when the famous alien face crop circle appeared. The one that had the message in binary. The binary message reads, Beware the bearers of false gifts and broken promises. Much pain, but still time. There is good out there. We oppose deception. Conduit closing. Let's hope they're telling the truth about opposing deception. Again, this crop circle should have been considered an absolute marvel. Again, there was no public outcry to figure out how these crop circles are being made. Again, nobody made the connection to the events in September the year before. So in hindsight, now that we know who's creating these crop circles, it's pretty obvious that the alien face is designed to mock us. The creators are gloating that they got away with it. And the entire time they had us talking about aliens and fairy magic. They're mocking us. This is mocking us. And they did it using blatant satanic imagery the entire time. And where is this cold fusion device? Where do they keep it? It's up there up there guys <laughs> and that's how they're able to do it all around the world and apparently they've had it up there since the late 70s or 80s beautiful and intriguing crop circles over 240 were discovered last year but there's still no satisfactory explanation well the mystery has sent ripples even to the highest corridors of power we discovered that a former chancellor and secretary of state for defense has himself had a close encounter with a crop circle. This British member of parliament is one of the first people to ever talk about it on television. I saw this extraordinary large circle with spokes radiating to four smaller circles. I'd never seen anything like it before, so I rushed home, got my camera, and I took photographs of it. Of course, ever since then, I've been fascinated to hear that it's been occurring in many parts of the country and not always in the same form as the circles which I photograph. And there seems to be no explanation, rational or otherwise. The late 80s is when the crop circle phenomenon was really starting to be published by the media. Now this was quite a while ago you saw these. This was it? in the uh, early August 1984. And even back then, they wanted you to think that it was aliens instead of the military. You used to, to be at, at the MOD. Could some mili secret military activity be the cause? I mean, people have come up with ideas of high flying plane with radar, high power radio transmitters buried in the earth. Is there something we don't know about? that you can tell us? No, I don't, I don't think there is, honestly. I mean, obviously, people have wondered about flying saucers and uh, wondered, for example, if a spacecraft could have come down. If I knew, of course, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> but I don't, in fact, know of any secret activity which could be responsible for this. But that kind of leaves a question unanswered. If they're able to make these crop circles all around the world, why do we find most of them around London in England? Well, I think that the answer to that is connected to their motivation to make the crop circles in the first place. They were testing us 
us. They wanted to see if somebody could figure out how they're doing it before they use it on something big. The whole point is that we need access to them. Well, in England, they have something called the right to cross or the right to pass. It's an old right dating back to before roads were a normal thing that allowed people to use farmland as a pathway. Technically, people do not legally have access to farmland in England, but on those specific pathways, people are technically allowed to cross on them. And because of this, there's more of a culture of farmers allowing the public onto their farmland, especially now that the crop circles have become such a popular phenomenon. I don't think in Canada and not very much in the United States, farmers would be that happy about letting the general public just have access to their property, even if something supernatural happened. But if you notice, most of these crop circles intersect multiple pathways in these crops. It seems like the public would always essentially have access to these crop circles every time they pop up in England. The general public would very easily be able to cross these pathways in order to access these crop circles. They wanted us to study them. They wanted us to figure them out. That's the whole point of bookending September 11th with the two most impressive crop circles ever. Again, if anyone was ever going to figure it out, it was going to be when these two designs popped up. But this is also why they chased those scientists that essentially discovered cold fusion out of their fields. They didn't even want us to know that cold fusion existed. They didn't even want us to know it was possible, let alone the effects of cold fusion on plant matter and metal. They don't want us thinking cold fusion whenever we see supernatural events or abnormal anomalies in the news. Instead, they want you to think that cold fusion is just their attempt to create electricity by creating a plasma donut like a bunch of idiots. So remember, people would report seeing orbs of light, UFOs floating around these crop circles, as well as those magnetic iron pellets on the ground. Well, microwave radiation perfectly explains both of those phenomenon. First of all, send an electrical current through iron and you will magnetize it. So clearly the directed device is either drawing that iron out of the ground or pushing it down out of the atmosphere and it's becoming magnetic in the process. And just like I explained in my Foo Fighters video, if you send radiation, specifically microwave radiation through aluminum like radar chaff, well you create a Foo Fighter. This was a regular phenomenon seen in World War II because they were just pumping out raw radar energy without really any understanding of what it was going to do. Oh, and before I go, I found one funny little thing while I was writing the script for this video. I googled the term microwave and crop circle and this is what I got. Apparently, in August of 2011, this 200 foot crop circle design of an alien smoking a pipe popped up in England, only a few hundred meters away from the largest crop circle ever. You know, the giant one I call my birthday crop circle? The media admits that this was most likely created using microwaves. It appears as if the media is now gearing towards trying to get us to believe that crop circle hoaxers like the beer drinking idiots in England are using microwaves and GPS to hoax their crop circles. Isn't that funny? Not only that, but there are a bunch of articles suggesting that crop circle hoaxers might be starting to become high tech. There's a lot more acknowledgement in the media today about how perfect the lines and the bends are on modern crop circles. Scientists have weighed in and said maybe even lasers are involved, so who knows? Anyways, as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Are crop circles the shadow government trolling us with their advanced technology? Am I crazy? Will there ever be another good Star Wars sequel? It's impossible to tell. But there you have it. It's true. Crop circles did 9-11. Bet you never thought you'd hear that.